Are you considering buying your first home? Today, I'm gonna to talk you through the process and my recent experience of purchasing my first property. Hello, my name is Daryl Connor, and welcome to another Waterford Property Watch, brought to you by Liberty Blue Estate Agents. Liberty Blue Estate Agents, established in 1997, has been at the forefront of property management and sales in Waterford for over two decades. Today, I'll be discussing my experience as a first time buyer as I bought my first home last year. I'll go through what documents to have ready, who to appoint, and what to look for in a home. First and foremost, it's essential to get a mortgage approval. You can do this through a broker who will make things a lot easier for you and help you find the best rates, or you can do it yourself. I went with a broker as I felt I had enough on my plate at the time, and I'm glad I did. I think it's beneficial to have all your documents in a folder on your computer, such as pay slips, bank statements, IDs, etc. That way you'll be super organized and ready to go when needed. It's also useful to have a solicitor in mind early on so you get an appointment straight away when you go sale agreed on a house. This can move things along swiftly, especially if you have a good solicitor. I personally went through Parker Law and found Suzanne and her team to be excellent to deal with. When I was house hunting last year, location was my top priority. I knew I wanted a home on the Dunmore Road, so I made sure to set alerts on various portals such as Daft and My Home to be notified whenever a new home came to the market. I'd also suggest following local agents on social media and making them aware of what you're looking for. Other parameters I had were, one, to have a good building energy rating to avail of a green mortgage. Two, it didn't have to be turnkey as I didn't mind making some amendments, which meant the lower price could be obtained. And three, plenty of space so bedrooms could be used for other reasons such as an office. Once I knew all of this, it was just a patience game. When my ideal home came up, I was ready, had all my documents in order and a fast solicitor, meaning I picked up my keys before the year was out. When it comes to purchasing a property, you'll need to know your maximum price. Bear in mind, you'll also need to pay for stamp duty, legal fees, moving costs, and potentially for furnishings and renovation. You should look into the first time buyer's grant if you're purchasing a new build. Unfortunately, I couldn't avail of this as the home I purchased was second hand. There are different thoughts on how you should bid. I personally came in at the asking price and was delighted when it was accepted quickly. In the current market, we are seeing most homes selling above asking price. I'd suggest having a conversation with your estate agent about how long that home has been on the market for and what the seller's position is before deciding on your opening bid. So what happens when your bid is accepted? At this point, you go sale agreed, indicating that both buyer and seller are happy with the agreed deal. You will need to provide a booking deposit, usually between five and 12,000, but every agent is different. If you haven't already provided your ID and solicitor's details, as well as proof of funds, you will need to at this point. This is where that folder on your desktop can come in very handy. If you're a first time buyer and you're in that period where it's in the solicitor's hands and you're waiting, here are some things that you could do in the meantime. For one, you could measure rooms to plan for furniture and appliances, either physically with a measuring tape, or if the agent has used Matterport to create a virtual tour like we do, you could do it online. Shop for furniture. Keep an eye out for deals, price rent for flooring and carpets. It's also worth noting various charity shops around Waterford can offer an affordable solution for good quality furniture. If work is required now, it could be a great time to source good quality tradesmen or research how to do it yourself. The length of time it takes for a sale to close really depends on how organized the seller was and whether there were any problems in the portfolio to address. Once all solicitor queries have been answered, both you and the seller can sign the contract. Technically, up until this point, the sale has not closed and either party can pull out. Once the contract is signed, the next step is for the solicitors to draw down the funds and arrange completion of the sale. From here, the solicitor will send a closing email to the agent and the agent can release the keys. Congratulations on purchasing your first home. If we can help in any way, get in contact with us here at Liberty Blue Estate Agents.